after going to the ministry, I had the privilege of just baptizing all kinds of people and uh, so and teaching on it over the years. And so I'll do my best to answer a few questions about baptism today. So the first question is, what is water baptism? And for that, let's go to the source of our information, which is the Bible. So from the Old Testament, and we'll look at the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, we don't actually see actual water baptism, but we do see a foreshadowing of water baptism. I think it's always interesting. You see a consistent message in the Old Testament to the New Testament, back and forth. It is one message from one God speaking to people. And uh, so we see foreshadowings of baptism in the Old Testament. The flood of Noah's day was actually a type of baptism. And uh, Peter wrote about this in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. It says this, and that water, speaking of the water during the flood, is a picture of baptism, which now saves you, not by removing dirt from your body, but as a response to God from a clean conscience. It is effective. It is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so the flood that Noah experienced and the world experienced was a picture of God saving his people through that flood experience and then landing them on dry land uh, days later. And then also the Israelites going through the Red Sea is a picture of baptism. So the Israelites were coming out of Egypt, their place of slavery and bondage, and God brought them through the Red Sea, destroying their enemies and giving them a fresh start on the other side. And then the story of Jonah is a picture of baptism. So Jonah was running from God's plan. I don't know if you've ever done that. I've been guilty of that, <laughs> running from God. But God is so stinking persistent. He uh, didn't let Jonah get away. And Jonah, there was a big storm in the boat. And Jonah said, hey, it's because I'm running from the Lord. And so they chucked him into the water. And uh, a big fish swallowed Jonah. And then I love, I think it's Jonah 2.10. It says, the Lord commanded the fish to spit Jonah out of his mouth. <laughs> and so we see this great picture of God's, well, his perseverance his patience, and uh, we just see God being very, very good in that story with Jonah, and um, and we see the power of God speaking to that fish, commanding him that he spit Jonah out, and so we see pictures foreshadowing of baptism in the Old Testament, and, um, and now we can look in the New Testament and see what God has to say about baptism in the New Testament. I love the scripture in Mark one, we'll look at verses one through 11 or so. It says, this is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written. Look, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you and he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. The messenger was John Baptist, or if you're an old uh, Pentecostal guy, you'll say John the baptizer. And uh, so this is John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and he preached. This is what he preached, that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. And it says all of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. So we see that as soon as people believed, they were baptized, much like the Ethiopian eunuch that we'll read about here in just a moment. As soon as people believed, they were baptized in Jesus' name. So what is baptism? Well, baptism is an experience believers have after they have confessed their sins. Baptism demonstrates in the natural what God has accomplished supernaturally baptism actually identifies you with the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus christ paul wrote in colossians 2 12 he said for you were buried with christ when you were baptized and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of god who raised christ from the dead. So water baptism is a demonstration. It's a picture of a person who has given themselves to Jesus and trusted the Lord for the forgiveness of their sins. So let's answer the question, 
where should we get baptized? So John baptized people in the Jordan River in Israel. And Jesus was actually baptized in the Jordan River by John. Now, just as a clarification, Jesus didn't get baptized because he had confessed his sin. Jesus is and forevermore will be sinless and without fault. And, uh, but he was baptized to demonstrate for us, to model for us what it means to be obedient to the will of the Father. I remember uh, my first trip to Israel. Um, I had been baptized, like I said, when I was in junior high school, but uh, myself and one of my associates went to Israel to visit missionary that we knew there. And so we, of course, had to go into the Jordan and get baptized because that's what you do, just as kind of a exciting thing to do while you're there in the Holy Land. So I'm baptizing him and he's baptizing me. And all the while in the Jordan River, there's these little fish that are like nibbling on your toes and on your legs. And it's kind of nutting me up in there because you feel all this stuff under the water that you can't see. The water's pretty murky, but you can feel all of this activity around your feet and legs and toes and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so I was kind of anxious to get out of there because I was like, man, I'm kind of over the fish, you know. And from the shore, this guy who was kind of overseeing the baptism site, because it's a big production, he yelled down to us and he said, hey, would you guys like to baptize some other people? Well, there was this whole other group from the States. I don't remember exactly where they're from, but they... I guess they figured we were pastors and they were right. So we said, all right, come on down. And so we spent the next, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes baptizing more people, kind of getting nibbled on uh, while we we're in the water. And it was just an amazing, amazing time. So um, it's people to this day have traveled and down throughout history have traveled to Israel to be baptized in the Jordan. And um, but it's not the only place that we see people getting baptized. In the scripture, in Acts chapter 8, uh, Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch in what is described as some unidentified body of water. Um, the Ethiopian eunuch was reading the scripture, and Philip ran up to him and said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I understand unless somebody teaches me? So Philip taught him, and he understood something about what he was reading and made a decision. And he said, what prevents me from being baptized Right now, there's a body of water. And so he stopped and was baptized on the spot in the moment. And so it doesn't have to be the Jordan. That could be very inconvenient if it had to be the Jordan. So any body of water is actually sufficient for water baptism. I baptize people in hot tubs, um, creeks, lakes, oceans, um, all kinds of places. I've heard of people get baptized in bathtubs. And most recently, um, I had this older couple in my church and um, the husband is on oxygen 24 seven. He has to actually shower with oxygen because he has COPD. But um, I was visiting to a house, doing a house call with him and he had never been baptized. So I said, well, would you like to be baptized? And he said, well, how can I get baptized if I can't get under the water? I said, well, let's do this let's take some water and just pour it over your head and that will be sufficient. And uh, because the, the, the purpose of baptism is to make a public declaration of your faith in Christ. And we'll get to that in a moment. And so this man wasn't able to do that, um, but we were able to baptize him anyway. And I was able to do that years ago as well. In fact, there was this old lady and she wanted to get baptized. She was uh, bed ridden, couldn't get out of bed. So, I asked her daughter, I said, would you get me a pitcher of water? So the woman gets the pitcher of water and it's unbeknownst to me, she gets this ice cold water. <laughs> and so I'm pouring it over this poor woman's head and she is losing her breath. It is so cold, but it was memorable and she was baptized. And so um, anyway, the topic of baptism and the purpose of baptism is not that it saves you but it's an indication that you put your faith in jesus christ and so whether you get immersed that's the kind of the picture we see in the old testament where you get water poured on you the heart is really what is most important in this situation because baptism is really a public declaration of your faith in christ it's it's like a wedding so you go to a wedding and 
man and a wife, man and husband, they, they, or man and wife, they already love each other, but they're making a public declaration of their faith in Jesus. It's really fresh in my mind because I've married two of my sons off in the last eight months, nine months or so. And so we've had two pretty wonderful weddings. And uh, so it's a public declaration uh, for in a wedding of a man and a woman coming together to declare their love and their commitment to one another. So baptism is the same thing. You get baptized in public so that people can witness your decision to follow Jesus. It's a public celebration of our relationship with Jesus, who is the bridegroom. Next question. When should someone get baptized? In Mark 1, 3, speaking of John the Baptist, it says, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. The messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and he preached that people should be baptized. Listen to this, to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. So as soon as people believed, like the Ethiopian eunuch, they were baptized. Some have been baptized as a baby. And uh, we see in the New Testament that Jesus was actually dedicated in the temple. And so in our church, we do baby dedication, but some have been baptized as a baby. And, um, and then some people get baptized when they're young. And then again, when they're adults, because they're in a different season of life. And in this new season of life, they would like to freshly dedicate themselves to the Lord. And so I would encourage us all to be thinking about when did we get baptized? When did I get baptized? I know my, one of my sons got baptized as a young man, kind of drifted from the Lord. And when he was older, re got rebaptized because he was rededicating his life to the Lord. And so the important thing is that we get baptized and that we understand what it is. It is a declaration of our faith in Jesus Christ. It is a declaration of our love for the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we've answered the questions, what is water baptism? Where should we get baptized? And when should someone, someone get baptized? And uh, I just want to kind of wrap things up a little bit here with what Jesus commanded right before he ascended to the Father. So after his earthly life and ministry, after his death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus is alive and well, appearing before at least 500 of his followers, and he commands something of us in the Great Commission. In Mark 16, 15 and 16, it says this, and then he told them, Jesus told them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. And so we see in Jesus' writings that believing and baptism, they go hand in hand, and it's actually our responsibility, each and every one of us as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's our job to go make disciples, giving the good news, preaching the good news, and then baptizing people. And uh, so I would encourage you, if you've never been involved in that process, number one of giving someone the gospel, and I'm sure each of you have, but also baptizing people, I would encourage you. It's just a, a delightful experience. And so um, I have some discussion questions for us. And uh, would you like me to share those, Phil, or did you want to share those? You've got those on the screen, probably. All right. A quick question for you before we. Yeah. All righty. One, uh, there often is a good deal of discussion about baptism, and, and we're not here to agitate, of course. But Steve, you just explained quite plainly and, you know, even handedly what baptism is so that we can avoid the challenges of discussing baptism. Why, uh, why is there a disconnect on different kinds of baptism among believers? Hmm. Well, I think among believers, there's all kinds of disagreement about all kinds of things. And uh, so I think tradition plays a big part of that. Traditionally, um, people have done 
different things and historically people have done different things and those things kind of get trans uh, get kind of uh, transferred from generation to generation. I remember um, when I was in Israel, I think it was a Greek Orthodox priest. Uh, I was on the Israel side of the Jordan and he was on the Jordan side of the Jordan and um, he was doing something that I'd never seen before. And I still don't know the origins of it, but he did something where he was baptizing somebody, but he actually cut locks of hair off of their head as part of the ceremony. And now I, I, I don't know what that was about. Um, I'm not Orthodox, but there was something going on there that obviously it was part of their religious experience. And so I think down throughout history, things have just been um, met things to people that they wanted to see continue happen. And so there's, are you talking about confusion about how to baptize sprinkling versus dunking versus all that kind of stuff? Sure. There are occasionally heated discussions among the brothers and sisters uh, about what is the right way. And again, we yeah. want, we're not doing this to agitate uh, to, to each his own. We just want to be alert to that so we can be kind to our brothers and sisters in Christ about it. Yeah, my perspective is, hey, what's how's the person's heart? You know, is um, we've got a model in the scripture, but again, everybody's got different backgrounds and experiences and understanding. And so, um, again, baptism doesn't save us. It's in it's, but it's a public declaration of our faith in Christ. And so, um, we just need to be careful not to make a major thing out of something that's probably minor. Okay, and then uh, one of the questions coming up is about have you baptized someone? So, Steve, give us uh, uh, if tomorrow someone in this group is approached yeah. by a family member, and and they say, "Look, I I want to do I'm, I want to do what you're doing. I want to be a part of this," um, yeah. and they say, "I want to be baptized right now by you," and we're a little bit insecure about that. What are the one, two, or three very basic things about saying, sure, I, who am I to get to you being baptized right now? How do we perform yeah. that in the most simple terms? Yeah, so first you just want to make sure that the person understands baptism, why they want to get, you know, ask them why they want to get baptized. And, and it's a great opportunity because some people think, well, I need to get baptized because it's just I've never been baptized. And they don't really understand it. Like I had a cousin reach out to me from South Carolina and she said, I'd like to get baptized. But as far as I know, she's not following Jesus. So she doesn't really have a clear understanding of the gospel. And so at some point I will get the opportunity to share that with her. So um, I wouldn't get awkward about it. I would say, Hey, I would love to baptize you, but first can I just share the gospel with you and make sure that you understand the gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and maybe that's the open door that you can use to share the gospel with that person. And if they've been, uh, if they've been saved, if they've given their life to Jesus, then you just follow the biblical example and you take them to the waters of baptism, wherever that may be. And you baptize, I always say we baptize, bring you to the waters of baptism. We baptize you in the name of the father, the son, and the Holy spirit. And we bring them out of the water. And so Real, keep it real simple, real basic, and uh, just real, real genuine, I think is the most important part. So, well, Steve, you just teed up the uh, discussion questions. Let's go to those now, please. Uh, thanks for that. Hang in there for a moment. Here's I will. question number one Why is water baptism important? Number two, what is your baptism story? And three, have you ever baptized anyone?